Hello and welcome to the DX Fleet interface and configuration video. I'll be walking you through the entire interface and how to use it, as well as how to configure the software for your organization and sites. Once we uh, log into the application, we're going to be provided with this All Sites dashboard. The All Sites dashboard is going to show us uh, all of your transactional history, as well as any active alerts within the application. It's an easy go-to place to see all of your up-to-date information for sales amongst all of your sites. We have a uh, site selection up here. So if we are going to jump down to our site, now we're viewing a site-specific dashboard. So now we're having the, the status of all of our pumps and our terminals at this particular site, as well as the following uh, data that we went over on the All Sites dashboard, but now in a site-specific format. So you can see here we have our pump status. Uh, we currently have two pumps and they're idle, and we have a fit status, which is also idle. As the somebody fuels the transactions, these icons will change. If any of the uh, pumps go down or if the terminal goes down, you will be uh, the icon will change and uh, you will be also sent a notification alert with the status of that change. We head over to the notifications tab. We have a context page. The context page will allow you to add individuals that would like to be contacted for alerts, as well as any sort of email uh, notifications for reporting or exporting. So we would simply come into the application. We would add a new contact. You would fill in the contact details for that particular person. If they'd like to receive text message alerts, you can simply accept the text message option here and you could provide a phone number for that particular contact. These contacts once again are going to be anybody that would like to receive email notifications, text message notifications or scheduled reporting or exporting. Once the contacts are created, we can join a contacts group. This will allow you to add multiple contacts for the application by simply selecting the contacts and adding them to the list in that context group. Once they're added to the list, you can simply define that group's name and then act also you have an option to always send text messages to this group. We simply need to save this to create that contact group. Once the contact group is created, we have an active alert history notification that we can schedule. So here we are going to define which contact group we're going to have turned on for these notifications. You can turn on and off alerts by simply uh, clicking on the slider over here. Um, then you have another option here. Does this group want to be notified via email or text message or both? In this case, we have them both turned on. We also have a, a timer or a delay uh, that you can set on the active alerts. Right now, this alert is currently set for an immediate notification. So as the uh, fit down status in this point, uh, if the fit goes down, you would get an immediate alert via email or text message. If you change this, you could simply set a delay timer. This will, in essence, start as the event happens. And after that time period is over, it will check the status. And if the status is still down, at that point, you would send the alert. This would allow you to disregard any sort of little minor issues or issues that get self-resolved. Or if, for example, you lose internet connectivity for a minute, it's going to basically allow you to bypass those notifications. Um, if you'd like to be alerted immediately, you can simply just select immediate. Then you just go ahead and save uh, all of these alert statuses once you have them configured. Under notifications as well, you have the alert history. So the alert history is going to show you any of the past alerts on your sites. So if the edge box went offline, if uh, you had a pump that went into pump sentry, got disabled, then you would see those active alerts and you can uh, you know, act upon those alerts. Jumping over to the cards menu, we have our card defaults. So card defaults are gonna allow you to speed up and optimize your card creation process, basically by setting up a default card template for each one of your card types. So if you wanted all of your cards to have a particular prompt, or if you wanted them all to be prompting for miscellaneous entry or something, then you can go in here and define a card default template. And every time you create this card type, this one being a vehicle, it will use this template every time it creates a new vehicle card. You could do that for your 
vehicles as well as your drivers and your accounts. In the accounts tab, you have the ability to manage existing accounts, create new accounts, uh, or make changes to any of your account status here. So what we would do is we'd simply come in here and add to add a new account. You're going to have all your account details, so you'll go ahead and fill out your account number and the name that you'd like to be reflected on that account. Once the accounts are created, then you can start creating new cards and each card you can define in being in a particular account. So we've already got some accounts configured. So we'll go ahead and jump over to the driver vehicle records. Uh, if you wanted to create a new account here, you simply come down here to the bottom once it's all filled out and you can just hit save and that'll create your account. Once the account cr is created for the first time, there will be no cards into it. Uh, but as soon as you go to the driver and vehicle records here, you have the ability to add a new card and then select an available account. So we're going to go ahead and click add. Here it's going to look similar to the account creation process. We have the ability to add a card number, driver name, short name, and any restrictions that are available on that card. So if we were going to go ahead and fill out this uh, card here, say we're going to make a card 7890, and then we're going to give it a name. John Smith. And one thing that the DX fleet has that you may or may not be familiar with is the ability to read a different number, a number of card formats. Some of those might be a keyboard entry, uh, mag strip card, uh, chip key, or RFID tag. Here we're going to put in the number that is going to be read at the terminal. So that's going to be whether you're using physical media or keyboard entry. And then here we have the ability to use an alphanumeric string. That's going to be the number that is reflected on a report or an export. So if you'd like a number other than the actual physical media that's being read at the terminal, then here you can actually go in and create this uh, with alphanumerics. So you can use letters and numbers or, or any combination of the two. Here we're going to go ahead and use the physical media. So for now, we're just going to say this is like a keyboard entry. Somebody's going to enter 7890 on a touchpad outside. You have the ability to set the card status as valid, invalid, or a particular reason why it's invalid. So we're going to just say this card is valid. We're going to give it a pen number of 1234. Here we could define any of the other fields that are required. So in this case, uh, short name. And if he were, there's any restrictions for the quantity or the product type, you could select any restriction. We're also going to want to select the fuel zone. Fuel zones will allow you to send the card to only specific sites. So you can define that fuel zone to be one site only or multiple sites. This is going to allow you to, to dictate which cards are going to go to which site. In this case, we only have the one site. We're going to go ahead and send it to all sites. We're going to hit save. Oh, and we forgot to select the account. So here we have the ability to select which account this uh, card is going to go into. So we're going to go ahead and select tech department. We're going to hit save. OK, now the card has been created. You're going to see that it was added here. And once the card gets created, it's automatically going to be pushed down to your fuel site controller. So as soon as this happens, there's a simultaneous sync process that happens all the time. So it's going to see that this card was generated. It's going to go ahead and push that card automatically to your fuel site controller so that it can begin authorizing transactions. Uh, the same thing happens when you process a transaction on site. It's going to see that there's a new transaction. It's going to pull that data into the cloud automatically. Uh, you no longer have to have any sort of scheduled pull or scheduled card updates. The cloud is going to simply see that transaction and add it to the transactions table. It's going to see this card update and it's going to push that card update down to the fuel site controller. This gives you flexibility of having all of your transactions up to date, all of your cards up to date all the time. In the cards menu here, you also have the ability to filter by the cards. So if you were looking only for a particular card in a particular department, you can come in here and you could filter those to see the, uh, the card selection. We also have a search box. So if you wanted to search for a particular card, you can also do the search functionality here at the top. Next to the card, we have options to edit existing cards, to delete a card, or to invalidate a card. If it's already invalid, this option will also revalidate uh, an existing card if you wanted to change it from invalid to valid.
jumping under the card import option, this will allow you to use a Excel template to download uh, the template. It will allow you to populate that uh, template with all of your card data, and it will allow you to upload those cards into the cloud for the first time. If you had a large number of cards or you're coming from a different platform and you want to simply insert your cards into the card table on the database, then you could fill out this template and you can go ahead and insert the cards automatically through the template. This will save you time so you don't have to individually create all of your cards. We also have a database migration option where tech support can go ahead and back up your existing database and insert it into the cloud for you.